Slocum. Uh, let's see. Over in the distance, over here, uh, that brown building, that's my apartment. Way over there, can you see it? That white dome is the Ismo Dome. It's a big sports complex. These buildings over here, burgundy roofs, are uh, the Shimane Winery. Kind of got this Japanese style home right here in the middle. Try and walk over here. Get away from the wind noise. Um, Alright, well here's as good as anywhere. Let's go over here. So the cars won't get me. Um, this is where I live. This is very rural Japan, where many of you are headed soon uh, as part of JET. And so I wanted to use this probably final JET series vlog to talk a little bit about culture shock and adjustment to your life in Japan. Um, first of all, I should answer a few questions. I've had lots of people ask me, are you going to continue uh, making vlogs after the jets have arrived? The answer is yes. Um, I really enjoyed making these, getting to know a lot of you from your comments, and uh, I um, will keep making vlogs. Uh, my first uh, task, I guess, is to make some vlogs about applying for jet. So those of you who are hopefuls for 2009, I will have some advice for you in the fall, probably in September or October. And of course, um, I'll make more vlogs about school life as much as I can and living in Japan. And hopefully some of the new jets that come to Shimane will uh, make jets uh, make vlogs with me. Um, okay, so we should talk a little bit about culture shock. Mm. You know, you're going to have a lot of adjustments, like trucks going by when you're trying to film. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, let's see if we, yeah, we can move, we can move a little bit. Maybe get somewhere a little bit more scenic. Um, just, you know, roll with it the best you can. You know, when I first came in 2004, man, so many weird things were going through my head. I was like, there's no cheese in the Japanese diet. Will I ever eat cheese again? And of course, you know, Italian food is incredibly popular in Japan and cheese is no problem. It's not as good as it is in America, but it's good. It's edible. Um, God, I don't use chopsticks very well. You know, will people laugh at me, blah, blah, blah. Eh, you know, it, it, it's no problem. I just, so many crazy things will go through your brain. So try not to let it worry you too much. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm blanking out here because I'm staring at all this beautiful nature. Um, you know, probably one of the biggest adjustments for me, I didn't really have homesickness. I should say that. Um, some of you will get very homesick. I was a student. <laughs> um, you know, do what you can to alleviate that. Um, keep good ties with the people that you love back where you came from. Um, bring pictures, have them call you if you can't, you know, if you don't have a long distance plan set up yet. Um, send, send you letters. You'll get email fairly quickly, but use it at work if you can. Um, you know, maintain those ties with the people back home. Some of you will, you know, have a really rough time of it. Um, it wasn't so bad for me. Uh, probably the worst thing for me um, was my diet. Um, it completely changed when I got here, you know, overnight. Um, I was in college right before I came and I, uh, you know, had to come here. There's no fast food in this tiny town I live in. Um, you know, there's no Starbucks. No 24-hour ATM. <laughs> There's like one bowling alley. Um, it's a big adjustment to small town life. And for me, you know, having to cook every night um, was a new challenge. Um, but, you know, obviously you can tell I haven't wasted away to nothing. And uh, you'll, you'll get used to it. You know, you'll find things that you like and uh, you'll be fine. Um, 
but yeah, no delivery pizza, no Chinese takeout. <laughs> you know, um, you might find a McDonald's, but anyway. Um, what else? Uh, you know, for me, another big adjustment was, you know, I was 35 when I came. I just turned 35. I probably hadn't ridden a bicycle in 10 years, you know, but here I was, you know, I had to get to work every day. I had to use my bicycle or walk, um, which takes double the time. So, you know, there's all kinds of adjustments. Um, some of you, it will be the heat. It's so hot today. Some of you, it will be your living conditions. Some of you are be, will be 23, 24 years old. It might be the first time you've ever lived alone without a roommate or your family. Um, there's all kinds of adjustments. But you'll have a good support group around you, and I know it'll be fine. Um, of course, you can always contact me if you really have anything, but there are so many people ready and willing to help you adjust to life here in what I consider to be a very wonderful country. So, having said that, one other person asked me about racism. Have I encountered any overt racism? Hmm, no, I really haven't. Um, there was a little trepidation on my part. You know, I'm an American, you know, are the people going to be like, you bombed us at Hiroshima, you know, and uh, I've never had any kind of overt hostility toward me simply because I'm from America. Um, Having said that, um, you will get called a word quite a bit. The word is gaijin. Some people think that this is a very terrible word. I, I tend not to agree with that. Um, I can't really ascribe any kind of hateful context to the word gaijin. There's a more polite form of it, um, which is gaikokujin. And basically, in its simplest form, it means other, or outsider, or foreigner. And that's what we are. Um, you know, here in tiny Taisha town, <clears throat> I am, you know, the only Westerner that lives in my small town here of about 16,000 people. There are some people from the Philippines, from China, from Korea, from Brazil, uh, in Shimane. Those are probably the four biggest groups. But I guess that's another big adjustment for some of you. If you're a white male like me um, and you're from Australia or America or Canada, for the first time in your life you will be the absolute minority. There will be very few other people like you around. It's, it's a little hard to get used to. Um, it's another adjustment. So uh, I just, I just have a hard time, you know, I've got, I've been called Gaijin so many times, it, it doesn't bother me at all, and I just, like I said, I don't ascribe any hateful connotation to it. Mostly kids will use it, adults not so much, but, um, you know, I had one jet one time get all up in my face because, like, I was at a jet function, a jet party, and I was joking with a big group, and I'm like, come on, Gaijin, let's go. And she's like, don't use that word. It's like calling us nigger or some other hateful, you know, word that you can think of. And I'm like, I, you know, I just don't think so. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully you won't encounter anything like I haven't. And, uh, you know, see what you think if you get called gaijin. And if you're living in Japan and you're watching this vlog, what do you think of being called gaijin? Um, okay. About 30 seconds left here. I want to make sure this fits onto YouTube. I just want to say thank you so, so much for everybody. Um, I, I sincerely appreciate all the comments, support, interest, views, everything with this jet series. Um, I'm signing off for now, but I'm not going away. I'm, I'll be back. Thank you so, so much, and you will have an excellent time in Japan. I'm so excited for you. Your adventure is starting. You'll have a great time. Okay? Bye for now.